All right, it looks like it's live. Um, last week there was a super long delay, so we'll see how it goes today. I'm going to wait for it to catch up so I can see it's on there. Okay, not too bad of a delay. It's a little bit of a delay, but I think it was worse last week, so hopefully that uh, stays the same. So good morning, uh, everybody, if you're on the Pacific Coast like I am, or good afternoon or good evening, depending where in the country or where in the world you are. Um, I know I just saw you last week, but Leah caught a bunch for me uh, last month. Just I had stuff going on. And so she's got a busy schedule this month. So you might see a little bit more of me. We just kind of um, are able to go back and forth that way. So um, yeah, so I'm excited to be with you guys again today. Um, kind of using a mix actually of a couple Previous, I think it's two different previous releases. It might be from the same release. Now I'm having second thoughts. Um, but it's two sets that I never have even had a chance to use yet for one reason or another. Um, so I'm kind of just excited to break those out a little bit and play with you today. So yes, Vancouver Island, Wendy. I imagine it is because it's pretty, I mean, it's a little bit overcast. I know you probably can't see in the window behind me, but the sun is definitely working to come out and the weather's getting warm and we're kind of kind of happy about it. Good morning, good morning, everybody. I see lots of people joining in, that's good. I will start going over a couple things now that I see uh, Leah's here as well as a good, um, a good group of the rest of y'all kind of joining in. Um, so first things first, if this is your first time uh, joining us live, it seems like every week we always have a couple people that are watching for the first time. So please leave a little note in the comment and let us know. We love to just say hello and welcome you. Um, and we're glad that you're here and that you joined us. Um, and then a couple other things, especially if you're new, if you're not, you probably know all this already, but I'm still just gonna repeat it. Uh, we give away a $15 gift card at every one of these lives. So the way you enter for that is just what you're all doing. Um, just comment in the chat, ask questions, answer questions, um, just, have fun visiting with everyone else who's here. Um, and then at the end, Leah will pick a winner from all of those comments um, that we'll announce at the end to win a $15 gift card to the Pink Fresh Studio store. Another way that you can get an entry is by sharing this video. There's a little um, share, I don't know where it is on a phone, but on the computer, somewhere down there, there's a little share button. Um, and you can grab that link and you can share that in a message to a friend, you can text it, Facebook Messenger, um, email somebody with that link. You can post it on your own Facebook or social media, or if there's a crafty group that you're part of and you know it's okay with the rules, um, feel free to share it there. Just double check and make sure that. Um, but yeah, and then come back and leave us a comment and let us know that you shared. That counts as another entry. Um, and then one other thing that we really appreciate if you do, it doesn't necessarily count as an entry to the giveaway, but we'd love if you hit that thumbs up button for us. It just helps more people find and join the fun, whether it's live or on the replay. Um, so we just greatly appreciate that. So, um, and then one final thing, everything I'm using today is released. It's in stock. I have it all listed in the video description for the most part. I mean, you know how sometimes those things change um, when you're live. Like, I don't think I've linked up any uh, bling yet. And you know that we'll add some bling before we're done, but I couldn't decide which one I wanted to use. So um, I didn't get that linked up yet, but I will add that once the video is over. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, and I'll do my best to see those. Um, Leah does a great job of catching anything I don't catch. So behind that Pink First Studio name is my partner in crime, Leah Lawson. Um, so she'll be behind there um, catching any of the, probably many of the questions I miss once we get started crafting and everything. So um, I think that. I think that covers everything. So take another sip of my tea and make sure I'm awake enough to do this. And Judy, glad that you made it here live. All right, I'm going to switch my camera and then we'll see about getting started here on today's party. Camera. Okay, make sure the screen catches up there and I'm also gonna get this pulled up on my phone so that I can see at one other spot, sometimes that updates quicker. And I see a few people talking about Mother's Day cards. I don't know why it didn't even occur to me. This would have been a great day to make um, some version of a Mother's Day card. So that's a great plan. Um, 
Like I said, I did not think of that. Although I'm looking at it going, you know, I probably could. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I probably won't today because I kind of have a plan. Um, but you never know. We could we could switch and it could turn into a Mother's Day card. So never say never, right? All right. Um, someone was asking how they share it. There's a share button underneath the video. Um, on I think on the phone it's like under the little tool icon or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, and you or you can just grab the link from your link from your browser. Um, there's probably different ways to share it. So if you're on your computer though, there's a little button underneath that just says share. All right. So I'm going to use the Magnolia pattern, just the stamp set. It's um, a pretty background. There are coordinating layering stencils. Those are out of stock. So I'm going to be nice. I'm not going to use those. Even though it was tempting. That's what those look like. Um, I haven't used those yet either, but I'm waiting for those to come back in stock and then I'll probably be making um, use of this set. But I kind of thought that this background um, heat embossed with a little emboss resist ink blending would be kind of pretty. So we're going to give that a try. And then I also never got a chance to use the circle floral set. <clears throat> when this released, I had to um, be nice and sacrifice my set um, to something um, to a retailer show or something. So I didn't get mine until later. By the time I got it, if I recall correctly, it was sold out. And so I had to wait a while and then um, I went ahead and did that. So, so we're going to use the stamp set. We're going to use the coordinating stencils and of course the coordinating dies and create this card. So I'm going to start by stamping out my background and then we'll stamp this and then we'll start um, kind of working our way through the ink blending. I think this is a good spot to start. I did forget to grab my Misty out. So let's go ahead and do that. I know I just thought it's so pretty and intricate. And one thing I really love to do, I'm going to take out my um, foam mat because this is a cling rubber stamp, so we won't need that. Um, I love to heat emboss in white and then um, ink blend over the top. So it kind of does like an emboss resist effect. I don't know how else to describe that. So all right, we're going to tape a big piece of white cardstock. This is just a half sheet um, of uh, eight and a half by 11 hammer mill. And I'm gonna get that just centered on there. I'm gonna die cut a panel out afterwards. So I'm not too worried about it for the moment. We're gonna get that all on there. We're gonna powder tool over this really well, just to make sure nothing sticks where we don't want it to. Grab my stamp press tool and my embossing ink. And I see that the stencils are actually supposed to be restocked soon. But I am not using the stencils again, just a quick reminder because sometimes it's fun to see how you can use a set a different way as well. So I've got kind of uh, different reasons. All right, because this is clear embossing ink, I'm going to stamp this a good couple of times just to make sure I have a really good impression because it's really hard to see what you're doing. I use the powder tool. Um, which makes it a little extra hard to see where everything is. And I also feel like it makes it a little trickier to make sure everything sticks. So I'm gonna go over it a good, at least three times. I'm gonna just make sure I get pressure on all the little nooks and crannies. All right, I'm gonna tilt that around. You can kind of see by the little bit of a reflection where my image looks pretty good. I know you guys probably can see nothing on the video. We're just gonna do one more. I think it's pretty good, but. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's good now. So we're gonna, we're just gonna call that good. I'm gonna pull this off of here. And I know I mentioned already, but I'm gonna, um, heat emboss this in white, my white embossing powder. Hey. Okay. 
Oh, pretty. I don't, like I said, I know this is hard to see. Once we start ink blending, I'm hoping it'll show up really well for you. But in the meantime, you're just going to have to trust me that it's going to be magical. Mm -hmm. We'll just say that. Is that a different angle here? Trying not to get embossing powder everywhere on my desk, although I know it's going to get in some places just because that's how it works. Okay, and I think we're good there. So I'm going to set this back out of the way. And really quickly, as I'm seeing embossing powder, I'm going to vacuum that up. There's a little mini depth vacuum that I got um, based on a recommendation from Yasmin. Okay, I'm gonna pull my heat gun. It's gonna take a little while to heat emboss, so I'm gonna be quiet for a minute while I do that. Okay, I think I got that all. Let's uh, put that around a little. Looks pretty good. Okay, it's really hard. I know it's pretty much impossible. That had to be like the most boring uh, watching heat embossing melt since you really couldn't even see anything. So I apologize for that, but I'm really hoping this will be really pretty by the time we're done. So, all right. I'm gonna grab real quick before we move on to the other stamping, just to get this done. I'm gonna go ahead and die cut out the largest of the stitched rectangles from this. So I have my panel all set to go. And then I'm gonna keep my scraps for a little bit because I might play with those. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and um, grab this off camera and die cut, and then I'll be right back. Um, my crafty adventures. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Misty Coast would be great. Another one that's great if you want more of the look of like gold embossing would be um, uh, Warm Buck. That's one of our favorite. We call that faux gold. So we really love that one. I'm going to save those little pieces of tape because I have a feeling I'll need those. All right. I'm going to save these little scraps and just set this piece aside for now. And then we'll use this in a little bit. But for now, it's just kind of boring and hiding on there and I'm going to quickly put this away on there. All right, sorry, cleaning up around so I don't have enough space to work. And then let's go ahead and pull out our stamp set for the circle florals and a panel, another panel of white cardstock. Let's go ahead and get that on there. I'm going to use that pretty lovely big floral image here. Being really careful as I pull this one off because it's just kind of a nice long thin piece and I don't want to uh, 
damage it any. All right, we're just gonna tuck this around so it fits on this panel here. I'm gonna be really careful, make sure it's tucked down in that bottom left corner because we are gonna stamp um, in, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna over stamp in black, I'm pretty sure. But I'm gonna start now with rocky slope. We might keep it in the soft gray. I haven't fully decided yet, but I'm leaning towards the black. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm gonna stamp this in a nice soft color, do our ink blending, and then we'll restamp over the top afterwards. And that's actually just fine of an impression for starting off here and doing our ink blending. So we're gonna leave that stamp set in there, set this aside, and then we'll use that again in a little bit. But in the meantime, let's pull out these stencils. And here is part of my plan here. If you see that big circle on that first one, I'm actually gonna use that as my plan here. Again, I wanna do a little emboss resist just with that circle. I'm gonna center it on there and do some ink blending, but we're gonna come back to that in a little bit once I get the florals done so I can kind of determine for sure what color I actually want um, to use. And you can tell here, I'm not using the alignment guides at all for these because I'm lining up to the already stamped image. Oops, okay, gotta pay attention to what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm gonna just stick those in place. I'm not even gonna worry about that um, getting ink in it because we're gonna die cut this out anyway. So we'll have some room. And then the other thing I'm gonna do today, it's been a little while since I've done this, but I wanna do um, a little bit of blending two different color families together for this. So we're gonna start, cause I wanna kind of get like a more of like um, the burgundy rose kind of tone. So I'm gonna mix some coral reef and lilac together to get um, some different tones. So I'm gonna pull out my slight ink blending brushes for the first, so my coral reef and my soft lilac. Open both of these up and see how this goes. So I'm gonna just start ink blending them on. Again, starting with coral reef and then we'll come over the top of it there with a little bit of soft lilac. And that'll just give us a different look to these. And I think it's gonna be kind of a fun way of doing it. I'm pretty sure I've used these colors together. It's just been a little while, so. I'll wipe off the extra ink just so I don't get ink transferring between the two colors. Oh yeah, that's working like I was hoping. I'm gonna hold just so you can kind of see that color tone. Can you see? I don't know if that shows, but it just changes the look a little bit, which is super duper fun. Now, instead of just like that coral reef tone, which is beautiful, don't get me wrong there. I'm not complaining at all about coral reef because it's definitely one of our faves, but I think it's fun to mix and match your colors sometimes and get different looks. And then we're just gonna do a little more coral reef just to solidify that. Okay, let me put my blending brushes away there. Make sure that's clean. And I told you I'd get a little ink in there, but I'm not too worried. All right, and there is that really pretty new color that we've made. So we're just gonna keep building up on the next color here. And because I'm so turned, there we go. I have to find, I didn't really think about when I stamped this, how differently it was going to line up, so. Go wiggle around till we're happy, and then we're going to go to the next color tone. Okay, 
will be passion fruit and candy violet for this combo. I pull those down a little so they can be spotted. I'm also going to move up to my next darker blending brushes here. Grab the purple and the red from that. My red, I think I had a fairly deep, I might have used candy apple recently. So I need to do a little bit of cleaning with this blending brush. So bear with me for just a minute while I do a little cleaning on that. Okay. That might begin a little bit better. Those deep colors really are dark. <laughs> starting to contemplate. I might want to get one set of brushes for my mid ranges and one just for the darks. We'll see. I'm, I'm still pondering this. So, okay. I think we've, we've got that there. Make sure I got plenty of that passion fruit on there. there go. That way I'm not getting any residual, uh, super deep color and I'm kind of blending soft just to make sure I don't end up with any super heavy concentration of color. All right. And same as last time, I'm gonna go over it all the way here with this passion fruit. And then we'll come over the top of that with candy violet and see what new color what we make. Should be kind of in a similar vein to the first one. Okay, that one was fairly clean, so that's good. Just a little bit of toning that. I love mixing ink colors. Have I mentioned that lately? I just love the, the whole different look that you get by doing that. And as I'm looking at this, I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to come over the top in the detail blacking. So I know I wasn't sure when we started, but I'm feeling pretty confident now. All right, let's take that off and see. There's our pretty next layer building up on there. We've got one more layer for the flowers. There we go. I gotta figure out my there we are. Pop those into place. I'm gonna go around until they're good. This one's a pretty easy, just a little detail layer. We could probably actually keep these exact same. Um, ink colors and just blend them a little darker, but we're going to go ahead and go up to the next deepest, which is going to be Very Licious and Regal Kiss. So I figure we might as well just go for it and get that pop of deeper color on here anyway, right? Okay, so there's the Very Licious. Wipe off the extra red and do a little bit of regal kiss over the top of that. And then for the greens and the greenery, I'm not blending colors for that. I'm just gonna go full on with those colors. Good enough on that. I'm not gonna clean it too good now. I'll clean it later. So there's our pretty flowers on there. And this is where I think that black crisp line is really going to pop and be pretty on here. All right, on to the greenery. And this one is just going to be one simple layer. I need our light brush first for this one. I guess I should tape the stencil on. So let's rotate this around, get those pieces lined up and tape them down. 
And then I'm going to do fresh pear fairly heavy on here because our next color is going to be the olive. So I want this initial tone to be fairly dark because this is a soft color. So I'm blending it on darker than I often would with these soft tones. You can also see some of these um, sentiments on here. I am going to use one of those as well. I'm just working on which one of those I want to use here in a little bit. So I think it's going to be that hello. Just trying to keep an eye on the comments too. I know there's been a lot going by and I've been trying to focus on whoops, getting this done. I might have to use any of these tape. We'll see. Pull that off one more time. Oh, and see, once you add the greenery, I love how that comes together. And again, ignore all the ugliness. We're cutting that off. I just didn't want to bother with trying to mask it off. All right, and we're just gonna play around until we get that kind of slipped into place. And then, like I said, I'm gonna grab, I'm feeling the stencil is gonna move if I don't grab some red paint. So we're just gonna call these lost hobbies and switch over to that lovely olive color. And this is the deepest tone. So I'm gonna go not too crazy dark on this one because we went from the lightest up to the dark. So I don't wanna have any ridiculous contrast. All that blended on there. Since I hadn't used this, one thing I'm seeing that would be, I'm gonna show you how to do it. I didn't do it on mine, so um, this might not be as perfectly aligned as it could have been had I done it. But because this is a long, thin piece, um, the stamp, it can be really helpful to use the dies to line it up and make sure it's straight and it's going to match up with your stencils. Get these out of the way for now. We'll bring these back in a minute. Bring these back in a minute as well. So we still need to do our other stenciling, but let's go ahead and re-stamp this real quick. And then I'll show you what I mean about, um, <laughs> about the, um, lining up the stamp set a little bit better. We're just going to go for this now. It'll be a little abstract and artistic and whimsical, which is 100% fine. And I can live with that. But yes, I definitely think it needs that crisp black. Oh, yes, yes. I like it so much better now. I wasn't sure until I started getting those colors on there. And that looks really good. All right, I hope you can just see how crisp and beautiful that made that. All right, real quick before, um, move on, I'm gonna show you this trick. Cause this, like I said, it's so barely noticeable. It felt a little hard to line up the stencils, but I knew exactly what I'd done and I hadn't thought of, so I didn't really mind. But let's grab that coordinating one piece style. And let's take it going to do is you're going to line up the stamp, just kind of fit it into the stencil there. Now it's all square and even. So now when I pick it up with the top of my newsie, now when I stamp and stencil, it's going to line up perfectly. I hope that makes sense. But that way, just because, um, I mean, you can kind of see how this set is. It's, it's pretty bendy. So if I put it on and just like stretch it a little bit that way before I pick it up, it can, that tiny, tiny, tiny bit of misalignment can make the smallest difference. But by using this to fit it into, it just gives you a guideline that you just basically kind of wiggle and set into place until it's right. And then you're good to go. So I just wanted to throw that tip out because this would be, I should have seen it and thought of it when I started, but I didn't. So I just kind of went with it and rolled with it and I'm okay with that. We can live with that. So let's put that, now that we've got that clean and ready to go, I'm going to pop it back onto here. And then I'm going to clean the first stencil and the last stencil real quick here. 
because I want to use these for the other pieces and I don't want any residual inks on there. So I want to make those clean and nice. <laughs> the closed caption said stem cell rather than stencil. But crafting is high tech, you know. <laughs> All right, so this is what I do with my stencils afterwards anyway. I have a little bottle of rubbing alcohol. I just fill it up and spray it on and then wipe it. I actually used my wrong. Uh, this is my stencil cleaning mat, but whatever, close enough. So we're gonna use these again in a minute, but let's go ahead and die cut these and get them ready to start arranging onto our Heard. We can still use grab the. I'm going to run and die cut this again, and I'll be right back. And there are those beautiful floral pieces and that like tiny, cute, little, adorable piece there too. How fun is that? Okay. And normally I would save the extra pieces here, but we've got ink all over them. So we're just going to get rid of those. And now we have our background and we're going to want to put our circle here somewhere in the center. And there's a couple of chads there to poke out. I just saw, so let's get those out. Oh, I love those little tiny details that you get with the die. Little, little tidbits. Okay, and then once we get that stencil, this will be what we can mount our florals around to tuck our sentiment into. Not quite sure how that'll go, but I kind of like that idea. So I think we'll do, that looks pretty centered there. I'm going to use a good bit of post-it tape here because I don't want to risk any of this getting any little peek loose through. And I also know how messy I can be. All right, let's do that one not quite wide enough, but you know what? I've got too much here, so I need a bit more there. All right, and I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to blend in the green tones. It's kind of my current plan. And then I think I'll do the sentiment in those same purple and red colors. I think that's a good plan. So we'll give that a try. We need our two green brushes. I'm going to start with the fresh pair and kind of see how we like that. Okay, and I'm hoping this will show here that embossed resist effect that we're going to get as we go over this. Decide how much of the olive we want once we get the fresh pear on there. I love how this is like magic, how it makes that design pop out. I really hope it shows up on screen well for you guys. I'm gonna kind of pop that up a little closer so hopefully you can see that detail. And then the white heat embossing also has a little bit of a shine to it. So you get a whole new effect from that as well. Make sure it gets all the way in. And then let's just bump a little bit of that darker tone, maybe along the bottom. Actually, no, we're gonna go all the way around. I think it's gonna add a nice little pop there to that. Come back a little bit more with just a little bit of that fresh pear to blend that transition spot. 
just make sure we have enough color. All right, are we ready? Should we see what this looks like as we peel it off? It's kind of like a fun little spotlighted little focal point there. How fun is that? And then you can still in person, I know it's hard to see, but there's still that shiny texture that you get um, from the stamp image as well. So I'm really pleased with that. Makes me very, very happy. So let's move back. I think I'm going to kind of go with the middle tones of these. I'm going to need this here in the purple and the red. And that, oh, I'm going to set that aside again now. Yeah, we'll set that over there. Actually, let's test. I want to make sure that I really do like. Oh, yes. I love how that frames that. I haven't quite decided if I want it just top and bottom. We're kind of off on an angle. I kind of like the angle, I think. And on that. Oh, so fun. Okay. I'm gonna set that aside again and let's go ahead and do our sentiment. I've got some paper scraps here. So we're gonna pop that on there. Take some of our extra eight that now we don't need. And then let's do a little bit of blending. So I'm going to start here with passion fruit. And I'm going to blend deeper at the bottom. I'm going to make sure the color gets all the way up, but I'm going to definitely keep it darker along the bottom. Just because I think that ombre effect is going to be fun. And then let's come in with that candy five. Oops, let's, let's clean the extra ink off just so we don't get a ton of transference there. And then we'll come in with that candy violet and change our color tone, just like we did on the florals. And then there'll be a perfect match, my, my hope there. Okay, over again with a little bit more of that passion fruit. All right, let's see how that, Oh, that came out fun. I love using new stuff. It's just so fun. I mean, I love having favorites that I pull out and use too, but there's just something magical about something that you've never used and having it come together and actually work like you were hoping, you know? When you feel like an artist without having to uh, work too hard on it. All right, so now what we have here is all this. We need to die cut this sentiment real quick. And that circle florals die set, part of why it's so big is it has coordinating dies for each of these stenciled words as well, which is so fun as well. All right, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that tape that I've still got on my stencil here. Might as well put that to use. No sense wasting it. All right, a little tape there, a little tape there. And one last die cut here. All right, there's our sentiment. And set that aside. I'm making myself a little mess off on the side here. But I do think I'm going to want one of these little secondary sentiments. A little hello. I'm thinking about either things will be better soon. Or actually, I think I really like that you are not alone. I love a good encouraging sentiment. Okay. I know I feel like I say this all the time, you guys, but I was a little scared today about how this was going to come out because the idea in my head sounded like it would work. And it was kind of one of those 50-50 chance that it would look good or it would look really bad. So I tried to have kind of some plan Bs up my sleeve, but I was worried. And I think it's coming out good. All right, let's stamp that little sentiment here in detail black as well. Nice and gentle. It's a very tiny, dinky sentiment. So I'm just 
stamping super soft, gentle little push in multiple stamps so that I get a really good crisp impression. And that looks really good. That's what I was hoping for. Okay, put that away just so I don't lose those little sentiments are so hard to not lose. I don't wanna risk it. All right, and then we just need to, where did I put it? Oh, I left it in my stamp positioner and put it away. Let's trim that sentiment down to a little strip and then we can um, put it together. See, and Sherry, yes, what she just said that this could still be a Mother's Day card, 100%. Just change out the sentiment. Absolutely. All right, I think that was even good. And then trim it down on the other side. I won't trim that down yet because I don't know which way I want to trim it beyond that. And then I'm almost positive now about my card base color because I I had three options out. Um, oops, all my little paper scraps there. But I'm pretty, I'm kind of feeling like that pink tone is going to be the one I, well, I don't know. I do think that might be the one that kind of pops on there. But let's see how we like it when we get everything kind of planned on there. Or I had a soft gray one. And you know, that one's. That one's kind of soft and pretty too. Mm. Or we've got the creamy ivory tone one. I don't think I like that one, oddly enough. I thought that one would be one of my top favorites, but now I gotta decide. The gray really is soft and pretty. Let's try. I don't know, I really like the gray because I do like that really soft background tone. And I know the pink probably makes it pop more, but I feel like it almost starts getting too dark and too busy when I do that. And this lets all of your eyes just focus in on that front part. So I think I'm just gonna stick with the gray, as scary as that is, so. I know there's probably gonna be a lot of people that are like, no, go with the pink, but yeah. Okay, good. Actually, and the first people I see popping in there with thoughts are liking the gray, so. Yep, and I think the pink is a little off on the shade too. I think you're right there. Because I was mixing colors, I wasn't uh, entirely sure. Oh, good. Even if nobody liked the gray, I was gonna go with the gray, but I'm glad everyone else agrees. <laughs> I did think about green. I don't have a green one ready. Um, and I'm afraid that would also make it a little overwhelmingly green. So I'm gonna opt for just sticking with the gray on this occasion. All right, so we're committed there. All right, there's that. Let's pull out some thin foam strips here. One last thing I'm just gonna toy with here. I don't think I wanna do it, but I wanted to play with. I did, I had some pre-foiled um, sentiment. I don't like that color. A couple others, but let's see. Really don't think I'm digging these, but I just wanted to see what it looked like with them on there. If we like that, I knew I wouldn't have time to hot boil with everything we were doing today, but, and I think now that I've added the gray card base, I think that's what's really gonna make that not, not work, definitely not that color. This one's the closest, but even that with the gray and the gold, I don't think I'm liking that. And then there's this, which, no, nope. wait, wait, wait. So we're just gonna stick with leaving these on here open. I did have the circles out because I did also ponder um, just cutting out and popping that circle up or down. I've now officially adhered it down without doing that. So clearly that's not gonna happen. Um, we're just gonna let that one go and not worry about it and pop our florals around here as is. Not that the hot boiled one is um, 
bad. It's just not the right color. And I don't really have time to pull out and add a different one. So I can live without it. So that's kind of where I'm at on that. So I got two of those. And I like to use these little thin strips. And if you peel off the backing first, it'll curve around whatever shape you're trying to get it to fit around, which makes life just a little bit easier. We all can use that extra help, right? Okay. And I should have taken a moment. So I'm just gonna do that before I stick these down and curl up the edges a little bit just to add some dimension before we stick those down. We should have done it before I put the backing on, but. Okay. Um, the gray cardstock color, Kelly, I believe it's called Fog. It's one of the newest colors from Spellbinders. And it's just a beautiful, I don't know, it's a super, super soft gray tone. I know you can kind of see with the white. I, it's kind of my current favorite. Um, I just used it for the first time here the other day and loved it. All right, which way do I want those? I actually think, I like this one. This one's a little bigger. So I think this, no, you know what? That one needs to face up. So we're gonna stick with that. All right, so let's get that centered around and where we want it. And then we'll stick that on there. Tuck that one down here. I think I'm going to put that there. It suddenly occurred to me I might want, before I adhere that down, I might actually, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to tuck that under there, I think. And then trim that just at a fun little angle there. And this also needs some foam tape on the outside of it. I won't put it on the very inner part. I'm gonna tuck that under um, the edge of that floral piece there. Do my best to make sure that's straight. We attach that down. And I did a little overdid the foam there. So I'm just gonna a little bit of that out. Oops, I think I just hit the camera with my head. Hopefully that didn't jostle too bad. There we go. And we can adhere that down and it kind of tucks under there, which is fun. And then, you know, this has to pop up on some foam as well. That's necessary, of course. I'm gonna use more of that, those little foam strip pieces to get that all. Sometimes it's easier to tear them than to sit and try and cut them. Another little tidbit, if you didn't know that you can sometimes tear foam pieces. Enough on there to make sure it's stable. As I say that, then I struggle to tear that piece. <laughs> okay, save that last little bit for later. And let's get all those little scraps off. Then we've still got that little tiny, tiny flower. It's got to decide where to put it. Oop. All those little backing pieces. I did plenty of foam because I want this to be nice and sturdy. Okay, all of those little pieces peeled off and ready to tuck in there. I think I wanna tuck, there we go. That's perfect. Keep the outside of the H kind of going over the edge of that sentiment and then the rest kind of tucked under there. All right, then where do we wanna put that little bloom? So hard to decide on those little extras. Well, that kind of works there. 
too close there. I think that's actually my favorite spot. I'm gonna pop it out of the, I'll stick that with a little liquid glue and then it's time to pull some bling out and see. I'm just gonna only stick that down at the base kind of under there. The rest can kind of just float free. And then let's pick some sparkly embellishments to put on here. I know I won't use the ombre glitter drops because I think pretty much all of those were out of stock. Except maybe the, you know, there might be some of one color left, but I don't remember which one it was or if it would work. So I'm gonna ponder white would work. It's not quite the right color. We could use some green. No, I don't know if I really love the green either. I'm actually thinking this might be a good one for either the white or the clear droplet. Ooh, champagne glitter drops could work. Okay, clearly it's going to be on the somewhat neutral bandwagon here. So. In a foil ring, turn it to the white side. Uh, you know what? That's something Sherry I actually did. I did ponder that, or just die cutting a separate one and turning it like that to do it. I could have done that, but I really do think it's kind of pretty just open the way it is. That that would have fully worked though. And it did cross my mind, but I didn't didn't want to add any more color and I didn't really want to add um yeah. All right, so that's Try, I'm gonna start with the start with the white and see how I feel about a couple of those. I'm actually gonna just grab all three of my trays. Let's just get a little bit out and then we can pick which one we like on there. And we have all the options. It's always so hard to decide what you wanna use. Oh, don't spill them, Heather. All right, let's play with what if we put. So that actually does really go well with the silver on the outside, but let's try. Let's try. Oh, that's too big. Those work too. Let's try. I actually don't love that as well. So I think we're going to narrow that option out. That'll help make that easy. I think I'm mostly leaning towards the little champagne ones. So I'm gonna put the jewels out of the way. Let's add a little more of these. And let's play with, I'm just gonna add a couple to some of the flowers, just kind of the bigger ones mainly. Kind of the base of those. Make sure, actually, you know what? I might like that bigger one there. I'm not going to do these on all of the florals, but I think a couple of the notable ones is worth it. And then if we put some little trios, turn some of these over. I think if we do a couple little groups of three along the side here, I think that will be really cute too. Just need one of the little, there we go, teensy tiny ones. Then we'll do another one down here. And these really are the perfect sparkly, oops, that came off of there. And more of the bitties. Yep, we like it. I like it. So I just need to adhere those down and then we'll be done. Oops. 
put these away before I glue those down because yes, I know myself. And if I spill embossing powder, I would still be able to take back one there. All right, let's pull that liquid glue out. And let's get all these stuck down. Carefully arrange those tucked down in there. This is where I get quiet because I have to focus and make sure I get them placed right, you know. I love that combo of the corals and the purples and that kind of rich jewel raspberry tone. I don't know what else to call it. It's really pretty. And then that last little set of three over here. Okay. And we are done. We made it. We even made it in time. All right. Here's a closer look at how we put this together. That fun, that circle focal point stencil. I just have to say, I think you could use that for so many other sets just to create, you know, a fun background. Just having that fun circle stencil. Super duper fun. All right. I'm gonna flip the camera around. We'll give Leah a minute to go ahead and announce a winner. And then I'll make sure I caught up on all of the comments if there are any final questions that I miss. Thank you, everybody. I'm glad everyone enjoyed. I sure loved playing with and kind of making a little bit of a different color combo. I love to play with my inks. And um, another, I didn't do it on this, of course, but another combo I really love is leaves mixing together like blues and greens. That gives you a whole fun, um, different look as well. So I've done that on other lives. It's been a while, but might have to break that out again soon and do that as well. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And Deb, it absolutely will be available for replay right after we finish here. Now, I know last week I incorrectly announced that last Saturday was Craft Hour with Jeff. It was not, we cut that on the scrapbook live and Leah did catch it in the comments, but this Saturday is um, craft hour with Jeff and um, a fun guest. I don't know if I should share that or not yet. Um, and real quick, I'm gonna pause because I see that Leah announced the winner. Deborah Seard, I don't know if I said your last name right, but congratulations, you won today's $15 gift card. Uh, email Leah, it's all in the comment there where she tagged you, Leah at pinkfreshstudio.com. Her name is just L-E-A, no H on the end of it. Give her a few days to get back to you. We've got um, a busy week this week, so um, it might be closer to the end of the week before she's able to return your email. And I see she saw it on there. So congratulations again. Um, so craft hour is this Saturday with Jeff. Same time, same place, just on Saturday. And then we also have our scrapbook live on Thursday. Um, this week it is Natalie, I believe. Um, so she'll be creating a layout. Um, she always mixes and matches in card making product. Um, even if you're a card maker, there's so many great tips. There's still a $15 gift card up for grabs. So if you have the time free on Thursday, we'd love if you stop by and come uh, hang out with us then. So, all right. And right on time here, I'm going to let everybody go. Thank you again so much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I'll see you in the comments Thursday if you make it. And then Leah or I will see you in the comments on Saturday with Jeff. Bye, everybody.